Well, thank you very much, Minister, for this uh, fascinating presentation about the policies of the new government of Greenland. I think it's the first time we hear on an international Arctic stage no uranium, no oil, no gas, but ambitious clean energy projects. That's a fundamental message. <laughs> from, uh, from the new government of a country which has the second largest ice sheet in the world. <clears throat> and let's all remember that if only a 20% of the Greenland ice sheet melts, <clears throat> sea level will rise about two meters everywhere in the world. So Miami will be history. Shanghai will be in big trouble. Dubai, Abu Dhabi, no longer fascinating destinations. So Greenland really is the place we should witness if we want to see what's happening to the world. And, and to me, it's been fascinating in recent weeks and months to see, if I may say so, a new generation of Greenlanders coming to the leadership in this government. And we have a great representative here today. It's a different Greenland. It's a different leadership. And there are different policies, as we heard in this speech. Thank you very much, Minister, for coming. I thank you also to the Prime Minister to sending you to take questions here on his behalf. We hope he will be able to make it next year. And now, for all of you, you have this rare opportunity to be the first international audience to put questions to a representative of the new government of Greenland. So, who wants to go first? Yeah, there's, there, yes. Good afternoon. I'm Dana Eidsness. I run the North Atlantic Development Office for the state of Maine in the U.S. And my question is, will Greenland be at COP26? And if so, um, what is your messaging around your participation there? Thank you for your question. Yes, we will be present at COP26 with our Premier uh, and uh, our Minister for Environment. They will both attend and have a, a, a full schedule. And we will focus on the same issues that we focus on here, which is to promote uh, a future with no oil and gas, to, uh, to promote the innovation of new technologies in green tech, which is power to x and other possibilities, trying to uh, build on that interest we see around the world and trying to make other people come on board because we witness climate change every day. Uh, and for us, it's not abstract. It is very real uh, and it's very worrying. So we think uh, we are all in the same boat on this and we need to act. So we hope to bring some witness to the stand. Okay, so. These are all your fans, they don't want to ask you any questions. <laughs> yes, okay, let's have a question there. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry, you, you need to wait for the microphone. And then we will come to you, so, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm new to this question asking from the back of the room, too. <laughs> I'm Dr. Leslie Field, and I work at the Arctic Ice Project, and we work on a potential solution to slow melt. Is there a slow ice melt? And we have some evidence that this works. How would we approach, you know, who would we approach uh, to see whether there's interest in Greenland for us to help brighten some of your darkened ice in a safe way? Well, as I understand that you are doing a research project and are looking for some cooperation with our government. Uh, we all the time have different dialogues with researchers and always welcome it. So I, I would just ask you to uh, reach out to our university or our ministries and ask 
for cooperation in that regard. Thank, Thank you very much for that answer. We Thank will then you. go to the next question, please. Heikki Lihavainen from Science Farpad. Thank you. They were really ambitious goals you have, but how are you going to finance them? How are you going to run your economy? Well, uh, you can say the, the stop for further uh, exploration of oil and gas, I think that there's no future in that direction anyway. It, it is a dead end in the end. Uh, we are all moving in another direction as a world. So I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, we are not saying no to mining, and there are still plenty of mining opportunities. We do have a lot of critical minerals in Greenland, uh, and they are accessible, and a lot of projects is underway. So the mining sector will be one sector to support our economy, tourism as well. But our primary and, and largest income do come from the fishing industry, and I do not see that going uh, down in, in the future as well. So, of course, we welcome foreign investments, and we do need them because some of these projects we have are quite, uh, are quite heavy in, in, in the investing sector. So we, we need others to participate. And I think we have interest, but uh, if you know anybody, please let them call us. Can I, can I just follow that by asking you about mining in Greenland? Uh, and before I ask my questions, <clears throat> let all of us realize that if we are going to have economic growth all over the world in the 21st century, we will have to do mining somewhere. <clears throat> we need rare earth and uh, metals and others. Of course, in Greenland, you don't have the forest and the earth that you have to remove. You, you can go straight into the mining. Is it correct? that big parts of southern Greenland have already been allocated to a great many mining companies in different areas. So if you look at a map of Greenland, almost all of southern Greenland have now been licensed out to different mining companies. Yes, I think, well, I have a few points on, uh, I want to uh, go to. First of all, yes, the southern part of Greenland does have a lot of mining activity also without uranium or other radioactive materials. So there are possibilities in the southern part of Greenland. Uh, a lot of these rare earths are uh, interconnected with radioactive minerals and therefore will be difficult to mine on after the new act will come into place. And, and that leads me to say that I think we also need in the world to debate uh, growth, how much growth is necessary. We are a small country, we don't need a lot of a revenue to make a difference. And I think all countries must answer, ask themselves how much growth do we need to have and uh, how much do we need to harvest and in what time. Well, we have one more question with a quick answer. If anybody wants to raise their hand, yes. They are at the back. If you can stand up, yes, <clears throat> and be quick, please. <clears throat> I'm Lisa Holmberg from the Arctic Indigenous Film Fund, and uh, you are doing very good work with your indigenous languages in, in, in Greenland. And uh, I'm asking you to invest to films. We are also doing very much work with regards to films and we have a festival and we're trying to fund uh, the industry better because we have a lot of great stories to tell. We are a storytelling nation uh, and we do uh, enjoy telling stories through films and literature and, and, and music. Great. Thank you very much. <clears throat>